who were not from New Mexico. Right. Or, right. They they did brought in there and were just right. So if they built them a jihad, all they got to do is go. Let's do it, and it can happen. So I don't want you to live in fear. I don't want you to live unsafe. I just want you to be aware of your surroundings. Number one. And number two is if there's ever a time that you you're going to draw close to God, it's now. And when I say draw close to Him, don't be in fear. Not afraid. I'm not afraid. But I know that you know that that, that <clears throat> this stuff is real, and it's really happening right in front of our eyes. You see, it's not some not something made up. It's not some scare tactic that some preacher or somebody somebody come up with. And, it, and when they were marching through New York this week. And Philadelphia and other places, when they asked and said, "What about uh, uh, that?" There was uh, they found thirty babies decapitated, forty babies decapitated by, by Hamas, and so they're saying that was all a lie. When they're marching in the streets, they're saying that's all a lie, it's all propaganda, it's really propaganda that they didn't have thirteen hundred die, and they didn't have these babies killed, and so they did. It's proof. It's there. You can see it. So remember, remember, whenever Satan's going to attack us in any way, the first thing he does is he attacks the truth. Always. He always attacks the truth. I'm not up here, like I said, I'm not trying to make you afraid. I'm not trying, I'm trying to make you aware of what's going on around us. And know that because God, God's good. He would say, well, we're, we're the most prosperous nation in the world. Don't you think they want to take us down out of all people? You know, so just be aware of what's going on, and they may never attack you. It may never be that. But I'm just telling you is now my I feel I feel that my soul was released because I told y'all. Okay, y'all, if you watch the news, you know things I told you. I didn't tell you anything to do. I'm just telling you to, to be aware, keep your eyes open. And uh, I found myself, you know, lately since since Thursday, I found myself kind of, you know, as I'm walking through, just kind of looking around and seeing just. In my surroundings, you know, everything's looking kind of out of the ordinary. It looks out of the ordinary. I'm not going to live in fear, but I'm also going to, I got wisdom. Yeah. I tell, I don't even Yes. Yeah, the moon will attack too. You got, you got the, the, the hotel and you got, you know there's always copycats. So just be aware of your surroundings, you know, and be aware of what's going on around you at all times. And what better time to attack the nation, uh, a Christian nation, than on Sunday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so just, again, not scared tactics, just be wise. Okay? Be very very wise. Now, now, I've already said all that, not to scare you to death, uh, but, but to get you to thinking, uh, and, and, and uh, now let's stand up and worship God. Remember, and I'm going to be doing some series of these sermons, uh, the Lord just keeps changing them and changing them and changing them as I start watching the news and seeing what's going on and, and, and comparing it with, with Revelation and Ezekiel. Uh, that, that, that it just, it just, and Daniel, he just blows my mind that this is all happening in front of us right now. So, so, I believe everywhere in this nation, uh, pastors that are listening to God and watching what's going on are preparing their people for what may be coming, including, which I hope would be, is the rapture. That would be awesome. You know, that'd be absolutely awesome. And that, that's on the, that's on the thing. That's, but all that's going on, the rapture is on the edge. All right? Let's all stand up. We're going to worship God today. Y'all say we're going to worship God. Okay, let's see here. That's what we're going to pray for Israel. Ready? We're going to pray for Israel. And today we're going to pray uh, uh, for written for Israel. And I can't even, I'm telling you, I got new, they fixed my glasses, I still can't see. You know, you know. If I fall down the stairs, just laugh. That's why, I, oh, that's not even up there. All right, isn't that good? All this time I thought that was working. Here we go. Let's see. I can see a light if it starts coming on. I hear it. Here it comes. I'm here to get y'all to say a prayer that I can't, that you can't even see. 
Let's pray him by faith. Here we go. Here it comes. Look at it. I'll see. I can see clearly now. The projector is on. <laughs>
time to receive our offering. If you haven't already put it in there, the plates up front. So if you've already put it up there, so put your hand up. If you haven't already put it up there, then put it in your hand and hold it up. No matter what, put that hand up. Let's say this together. I let my offering to you that it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed, although it leaves my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply. Accept my seed, O oh Lord. Give Lord another. Uh, Praise the Lord. It's real good to the Lord in prayer at this time. Does anybody have an outspoken request this morning? Amen. Uh, yes, remember Kelly Corbett, my cousin's husband. He uh, has a tumor on his lung. So uh, they believe to be lung cancer, so just keep him in prayer. Anyone else this morning? Uplifted hands, special needs, lost loved ones. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Remember Israel. Amen. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the time and opportunity we have to be in your house and to be in one mind and one accord. And we ask that your presence would touch each and every life, each and every situation this morning. Show yourself strong, Lord. Let your people see it, that we may really believe and depend and give testimony how you live, Lord God. Father, with all the things transpiring, Father, we ask that you would touch the hearts and lives of all and draw them closer unto you, Lord God. You said if you would be lifted up, Lord, you would draw all men unto you, Lord, and help us to lift you up in these days. And Father, we'll thank you for everything said and done. Anoint the remaining of this service. Prepare our hearts to receive your message and anoint the pastor as he delivers. And in Christ Jesus' name, the church said. Amen. Amen.
teams together in the acapella. Ready? Let's see this. Let's see there. Here it is. Ready? So sing this with me. Acapella. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen? Amen. Are you listening? Amen? Amen. 
You know, when people tell me, well, Satan don't bother me, I think, well, if he's not bothering you, then you're not bothering him. Amen? Because if you're bothering Satan, if you're actually doing something for God, you are in his sight, he's watching you, and he wants to do all he can to rob you of your focus. So now, he wants to break your focus. So now, here it goes. <coughs> Proverbs 20, 9 and 18. This is a very powerful scripture where it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he to keep the law happy as he. Now, that's a heavy duty, that's a heavy duty scripture here. Because some people think you're just talking about you got visions coming from God and all that. If you're not careful, that gets way out somewhere, and you might, get, you might end up being working with your feelings versus faith, and you're just thinking God's a cosmic sugar day. That's not what it's talking about. Let's, let's give you a little bit here. Let's watch this. Vision is a clear word from God. A clear word from God. That's why it says, happy is who keepeth the law. Okay? Vision, a clear word from God, which means when you've got that vision in front of you, you've got an unbroken focus. But only an unbroken focus that says, a lot of people, or so, so without that vision, people perish. That word perish means to pine away. Which means to slowly let go. Wow. That's why Satan doesn't want you to know God's Word. Because if you don't know God's Word, you don't have a clear vision. And if you don't have a clear vision, then you're going to find yourself perishing, pining away, slowly but surely letting go. I have been there before in my life. I've been doing this for 34 years, 35 years. I have been times, even as a preacher. I find myself got so busy about everything else that I was actually letting go of the grip of God. You can adjust your halo if you want to, but I promise you, there's nobody in here that had not had that feeling before. Okay, the problem is it'll come, but the problem is is when you don't find it and it just keeps on going. So let me ask you a question. How is your focus? Number two, you ain't got the answer out loud. Number two, what are you focusing on? Number three, have you or are you in the midst of slowly letting go? Because God's not going to let with you. He said, you get my hand, no man can take you out of my hand. But that's nobody, no man can take you out, but you can crawl out of it. So, so, let's do a little bit deeper. Let's go deeper here. Now, now, these, these sisters, two sisters, now these sisters had a lot in common, a lot in common. Let's just go about this. They were both loving, they were sincere women who were close to Jesus. They spent time with him. They welcomed his presence now. Now, now, now the similarities begin to change. Everybody in here, I hope, is close to Jesus. I hope everybody in here spends time with Jesus in praying his word. And I hope that everybody is welcoming his presence in here today. But now we're going to, now, now I'm going to meddle some. Ready for me to meddle me? I'll say, Lord, reply, preacher. Lord, reply. Lord, reply. Ready? They were similar, but now, here's the big change. With their focus on his presence. Now, now, now get ready. Here it goes. One was preparing to work for him. That's Mary. I mean, Martha. One was preparing to let him work through her. That's Mary. They're both working for God. They both love God. They both want to do their best for God. But one is working, going at it. And the other one is taking out time to let God work through her. Abraham Lincoln said, if you give me eight hours, to chop down some uh, trees. I'm going spend seven hours sharpening the blade. When you spend time with God, let Him work through you, that's when the power takes place. I've done a, one funeral week for the last three weeks. I've done a funeral, funeral, funeral. 
And when I go in there with the family before we go out into the to sanctuary, and I'm praying with the family, and here's what I always ask, and you see, you've heard it. How many here have said today that you've got to be strong? And hands go up. And I'll do this, I'll say, you don't have to be strong. Instead of saying, God, I need to be strong, I'll say, God, you need to be strong through me. And it's amazing. Because right then and there, at that moment, faces begin to change. You can see the expression on faces. As soon as they hear, you don't have to be strong. Let God be strong through you. It is amazing. Immediately when somebody gets that, how things change. So, you can think about this like Martha was being strong. And Mary was letting God be strong through her. Why? That's some powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. So, one was preparing, <coughs> one was being stressed, and the other was being blessed. You ever been there? Well, I got a homecoming next week. <laughs> I promise you, the homecoming is going to be some blessed, it's going to be some stress. I promise you. Okay, so you have to make a decision. Oh, what you want to be. Do you want to be stressed? Do you want to be blessed? I remember that I saw a shirt that said, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Right. Yeah. I like the little one that had the old way across and said that Jesus had already beat the devil with the ugliest thing. <laughs> All right. So, here it is. We, we, we get ready to say, Lord, the plow, so here it is. Both were seeking to do the right thing. But one did it in the wrong way. Let's sit here. Put it back there. There you go. But one did it in the wrong way. All right. So getting back to focus. It says in verse 39 that she was at the feet of Jesus. So that, let's just go ahead and, and, and talk about this for just, just, just a minute. It speaks of position. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. That word sat means a lot more than just sit. It means to sit as close as you possibly can. I remember taking, when we first got Beth, and she was four years old. And I remember uh, we took her to Disney World. And we were in a, in a show called Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. And Bethy was sitting on the lap, and she could feel, well, matter of fact, she was sitting so she could put a, she could feel her feet on the floor. And when the man, the screen turned over and the mice came out, because we're now, we're shrunk, we're shrunk. Everything got great big. And it makes you feel like it. And then all of a sudden these, these mice went running toward us and they started shooting air through the seats like the mice were coming through. You had to go, woo, 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 woo. And Bethany jumped off like a little monkey. I have a sunglasses stuck up here. And I had an ink pen stuck up here. And now she grabbed me so hard I had ink been stuck in here. <laughs> and I had glasses stuck in here. And Bethany squeezed me so hard and I said, it's only air. Can I have some? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it means. You got so close. They were saying, so close. That there's no room in between. All I've heard for the last two weeks is, is there any sunlight between the United States and Israel? There's sunlight, there's sunlight, there's sunlight. There shouldn't be sunlight. There's sunlight. And you hear talking about other people, you know, there, here's these politicians, instead of being together, there's sunlight in between them. But here, there's no sunlight. Are you as close as possible in your own mind as you can get? Acts 1 and 2 and 3. The Bible says Paul was, was caught at the feet of Gamaliel, at the feet of the master. That's the proper place for a disciple. So where she was at was in a place of submission. Now we see the place of submission saying, God, I need, I need you more than ever. With all the stuff I see on TV right now, and all the stuff I see going on around us, and, and the way the economy's going crazy, and now they're talking about, when this war could last any longer, 
gas is going to shoot up six, seven dollars a gallon, and in California it's already seven dollars a gallon. So, so they're talking about how the gas is going to go up, and we're not prepared for anything else, and and how this is going to take place, and all this. And so, you know what? Instead of, instead of stressing out, get into this. Some of y'all are here today. You're stressed out. My challenge today is get at His feet. And watch what God can do. It's also once you get at His feet and say, God, I need what you got for me, then it's a place of peace. Because Mary's at peace. Without, without Martha. Martha's in the kitchen. Wow. Now I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm not advocating don't do anything. No, 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 no. That's not what this is about. This is a this is a picture. This is a snapshot. Yes, we need to be busy working for God. Yes, we need God to be using us. But there's a difference between working for God and God working through you. You go to his feet first. And that's when he will work through you. It also speaks of listening to the right voice. Because it's perception. Mary said she was hearing the words of Christ. Now, that word heard is a special word. How many of you ever heard of an echo? You've been out, you've been in a, you go on a camera, and you go, hey! They go, hey, 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 hey. But you open the mountains, you go to the camera, and go,
but she refused to take his presence for granted. What well, does that mean for us? We really don't know what's getting ready to happen. We look at the Bible, and we can tell by the Bible, it looks like Ezekiel 38 and 39 is getting ready to take place. Because there's this one great battle before the rapture, and there's a great battle at the end. At the end, Jesus is going to say, enough's enough. It's over. But at the front, there's going to be some fighting. And some nations are going to go down. So, my question. I hear it. I heard it this morning. I've heard it time and time again. Get ready for global jihad. Is that just a scare tactic of some terrorism? It could be. Or are we going to face another 9 11? And if they break out in sales or on the wood or whatever, guess what? 9 11, 3,000 people. And in comparison, remember, in comparison to what Israel's lost, they'd have to lose 35,000 people. If global jihad takes over and takes place, <laughs> we could lose 35,000. So my question, are you taking advantage of the opportunity to worship God? This is a true story, absolutely true story. I didn't have to make this one up, really. Didn't have to make a big part of it. In a, in a big old church, I think it was New York City, it's up north, I think it was New York. In the middle of the service, I don't know, 10 or 20 masked men dressed in black, wearing masks, come in with machine guns. Didn't shoot anybody here. Said, all of you that's not ready to die for your faith, leave. And a good portion of the church left. That's not necessarily surprising. The surprising part is this church had like 10 ministers and all these song ministers and all this. And when you try and face them, over half of them left. <clears throat> he had robbed everybody on his way out. He looked over at the preacher and said, okay, all the hypocrites are going to go up and have church now. Wow. Are you busy working without him working through you? But he works through you. It's amazing what you can do. It's amazing how much power you got. It's amazing how things happen the way they happen. How you meet certain people in certain places because you let God work through you. So right now the world is distracted. Our nation is distracted. With all these protests and all this stuff. And even at the protests, they're not peaceful. There's people fighting on both sides. They're coming at each other. It's only going to get worse. So now, there they are. <laughs> Get my sister to help me, Jesus. Don't she see? And he wants to see that. Don't you see? See, we got to get beyond our distractions. Distractions are like your father or mother. You're full of distractions. Amen. Speaks of priorities. Martha's priority, serving Christ and others. That's good. That was good. She's not doing a bad thing. It's just how she's doing. Matter of fact, a servant, deaconess, which means deacon. She was being a deacon, a servant. But in the midst of her working for God, she was cumbered. That reminds me of these things to do when he was a little fellow. Ready? She was covered. Which means to be driven about mentally. To be distracted. To be overoccupied. To be too busy about the thing. I can, I'm talking to somebody. I can look at them and tell who this is going on. So she was coming. 
they don't need a Cumberland. It's a Cumberland. Although not what a Cumberland, that's how I feel. All right. So now, he's asking a question. Could it be she took his presence for granted? She saw it as an opportunity, but it was really an opportunity, or did she take it for granted? Because I know there was 12 people plus there, and I know there's a lot of people there to eat, but could she have, now it seems like, you know, did you say the blessing before you, when, 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 when the opera came, Mr. Mom, my boys used to say the blessing after we ate. <laughs> you get me. <laughs> my cooking was so bad. <laughs> They said the blessing after we ate. <laughs> All right. So now, Mary, she was blessed. Martha was busy. Listen carefully. This is this is good stuff here. Is it possible? Listen carefully. I've seen this and I've done this. Is it possible to work outside? Here morning. I got so excited for God. I just kept every again kind of job coming. I want to give it to you, give it to you, give it to me. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, 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 I got it. And what I found out is some of that stuff was pretty, pretty intense and intriguing, and some of them was just driving me crazy. It's because I was stepping out of my noise and try to do something that I was anointed for. So, the question is, have you ever done that? You get so busy working for God that you forget that you got to let God work through you. And if you step out of your anointing, there's no guarantee that God's going to work through you. And not only that, but sometimes we look beyond our anointing. We're called. We know we, know, we, know we got to do this, but we come overloaded. Because we're doing what God called us to do, but we're so busy that we neglect to let God do the work through us. And we wind up in trouble. Is it possible, this to this, this is heavy stuff. Is it possible to have enough to get you going, but not enough to keep you? Hmm. Think about it. Man, you get a good service going, and you're ready, you're ready to take on hell with a water pistol. I'm ready to take on the devil with a water pistol. And after service, you go outside and can't find a water pistol or the devil. Because they got worked up. But they didn't work out. Very important. So now, one more question. One more thing. If you find yourself working outside of your anointing, you find yourself working beyond your anointing, you get going, you ain't got enough to keep you going, here's the danger. Burn out and rust out. I remember when I was doing all this stuff, when I had to take on every job they have, taking on everything. And I remember, I hear people say all the time, you better be careful, you're going to burn out. And I'd be, I thought this was so spiritual. I'd say I'd rather burn out than rust out. Now I look back over and think that was stupid. Because whether you burn out or rust out, you're still in trouble. The results are the same. This one's got some, some singes on you. So now, I'm going to screw it. This was so, Maximus said this in Gladiator. Oh man. They're going to go into battle. He said, Some of y'all ain't going to make it. He said, Matter of fact, some of y'all, I will see in their version of heaven. Some of y'all might see in heaven today. Some of y'all see back here. Some of y'all will see in heaven. He said, I want you to remember this. And this is so powerful. 
because this is us now too. What we do in life echoes in the Trinity. Wow. Just, just, just take me. I've heard him say, well, look at all they're doing for God. Look at all the jobs they're doing for God. Oh, well, I remember they get to heaven, they're going to get all these rewards. I'm thinking, as I got older, I realized not necessarily because if they weren't anointed, if they weren't called of God, didn't, that's not what God called them to do. I'm not so sure. Think about the person that had one job, but they did it because they knew God had called them when they trusted Him. They did that one job and did it well. They weren't distracted. Wow. So, the righteous shall be everlasting in, in everlasting remembrance. Psalm 112 and 6. We need to wind it down now. Here's Psalm 112, 6 through 8. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be everlasting in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart shall be fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his <laughs> Get ready. I'm getting ready to wind down now. Brandon, you can help me get ready to start playing something. What's your focus on? What's your focus on? The latest greatest fad, the latest greatest whatever. I got to have this in my house. I got to have this. I have to wear this, and you know, and I got to have a certain kind. I can't wear a certain kind of shoes. I got to have this kind of shoes. I can't do this and that. You know, blah 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 blah. All this, you know, and there's spiritual fads and there's spiritual things. That, why should you focus on? It better be on Jesus. Here's the danger of broken focus. Would you watch this and think about it? Think about your own life. When you have a broken focus, it distorts things in your life. I remember watching uh, Tom and Jerry, and Tom was going out to Jerry relentlessly, and Jerry had to stand in front of a light at night, and he shouted through way, way, way over Tom. And Tom got scared and run. And then looked down and saw a little bitty Jerry. It was just a shadow that scared Tom. He could have easily taken him. But it was distorted. His view of Jerry was distorted. So now, it distorts the balance life. If you've got a broken focus, you're not going to have a balanced life. It's not going to happen. Your distorted life is just going to keep the scales always out of tip, always out of balance. And it's going to keep you busy trying to keep it balanced, and you'll find yourself things are going to be falling by the wayside. Like a shipwreck, you've got to take and throw out things because you're trying to keep it balanced. So first it distorts. Life. Secondly, it distorts your relationships. Martha was distracted. So it distorted her relationship with God, number one. He was right there. They didn't know Calvary was coming. They should have been at his feet. So she's upset with Jesus because her relationship with Lord had been distorted. She was upset with her sister because her relationship with her sister had been distorted. It's so important that we don't let our focus, especially now, get broken. It's not time to go run and hide. It's not time to climb under the bed. It's not time to just stand like the Thessalonians they went up on a mountain and said, okay, Jesus, come and get us. But Paul said, calm down. The Lord had already come. We'll know when it's coming because all these things you start talking about. 
So, this scorched our vision. A broken focus is going to scorch your back. I'm still trying to see her through these things. This is a this is supposed to be the latest craze because they replaced them. They replaced them and replaced them. I could see a whole lot better before I got them. I was in DC had his birthday supper at Deadwood Friday night. So I go to Deadwood and have I go to that's one of the silos. So I go to the silo bar and I'm loading up on the silo bar thinking that looks good, that looks good, that's so good. And I said, wow, they're small, but I like them bacon bits. So I picked up a big old spoonful of bacon bits and filled them on my salad. As I'm walking away, the light hits it. And I put sunflower seeds. <laughs> because these awesome, awesome glasses. <laughs> and the lady looked at me and said, Sir, do you have a problem? I said, there's wrong stuff in my side. I said, well, you put it on it. I said, yeah, put these glasses. You want to try it? She said, no, you give me that. We'll get you another one. I said, thank you. So, it distorts our vision. It will distort your personal joy. Do you know how hard it is to have a joyful life when you're hindered all the time? Uh, can you imagine? All right, let's think about it. Here you go. Here you are. I'm trying to live a final slot. Wow. 
When you search through with everything you got inside, and I know that you're giving all you got, I'll let you find me. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all nations and all the places where I've driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. He was talking to Israel, but you know what? There's a lot of people today that's in their own personal exile. They don't have any peace with God. They don't have any peace with people. Ugh. Instead of getting angry with God, getting angry with everybody, just spend some time with God. This week's assignment. Something I want you to do. Number one. Work on your focus. Just work on your focus. I'm not saying that you lost it. But there's not a person in here that couldn't work on their focus. Here's how. Ready? Seek his presence. Well, I've got to be proud of me. I'm going to work, 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 work. Well, he goes. Well, I want to work, 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 till he comes. See, when I do work, 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 till he comes. I was sitting out talking to my brother the day, and he said, I'm getting ready to retire, and blah, 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 and my wife looked over. He said, he looked over at me, and he said, what about you, brother? My wife said, he retire. I said, I ain't got any, I don't have any plans to retire. I'm going to keep on, just keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on. I said, because it's burning in me. I said, I just got to go. But I can't keep going. You can't keep going if you don't see his presence first. He's got to work through you. Through you. Number two, honor his presence. Honor. Wow, just honor his presence. What does that mean? You know, when I first got Bethany, and she'd been through so much abuse, she was four years old, and they told me, said, now she's going to start talking. When she trusts you, she's going to start talking. She's going to talk some things that will probably make you angry. And some other things that will probably make you sick at your stomach. Because she'd been abused by her dad and her stepdad. And her face was broken from the abuse. And her body when they picked her up. When they picked her up, she would wear time makeup so she could even get in the public. And she had bruises and cuts all over her body. There wasn't a spot that big didn't have a bruise or a cut. And she was bleeding. He said something now. She hasn't talked to us much. But she trusts you. So get ready. Let me ride 995 or I 40. Traffic everywhere. We were trying to get somewhere. And all of a sudden, Bethany was just a little four year old. And the guy's names were Bill and Rob. Her dad or something like that. And she got I was my I was I was playing one day. And Robin did blah 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 blah. And it hit when I pulled it. And so I pulled over on the side and I turned off my car and turned on my fingers. I said, talk to me. She so quit talking, let me ride again. And then we get talking again and she got it. Did you want Bill did to me? And I said, No, I don't hear. And she started talking, so I pulled over on the side of the road. And I listened. And for years, no matter what I was doing, Bethany started talking about the stuff that happened to her. <coughs> the on the side of the road, I stopped what I was doing, whatever. And I carried to the side and said, I just want to hear what you got to say because I knew it was terrible for her. And plus, I learned a lot more about what was going on. Has God ever tried to talk to you? You've been seeking him, he's trying to talk to you. But you don't honor his presence. I was honoring Bethany by pulling over. I was honoring Bethany by stopping. I was honoring Bethany by saying, Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. 
Are you honoring God's presence you're asking for when He starts talking? Are you honoring Him? Or are you just pushing to the side? Next, move in His presence. I'm not doing it without you, God. The hardest thing I ever had, ever had to do in my life was to preach my own daughter's funeral. I cried all the way up here, I cried all the way back. When I was up here, I was in God's pocket. But I said, God, if you don't do this, I can't do it. So I said, I refuse to move without your presence. And when Brother Pollock said, it's your turn, brother, I felt, honestly, I felt like he picked me up and towed me up here. And everything that was in her dream that she had every month for eight months came to pass. There was laughing, there was crying, there was shouting, there was singing. The place was so packed, we had chairs on both sides of each aisle and people standing around. Everything she saw in that dream, everything, everything came to pass. But if I had not had moved in his presence, wow. It wouldn't happen. Because then I just took hands off of us. Here you go, Lord. You do it. Finally, trust His presence. When I was on call chaplain at Pitmore Hospital, I worked from 8 at night to 8 in the morning. I never knew what was going to be. I never knew what was coming. Ever. That one night I ministered to 56, 57 people, seven deaths, and did counseling. It was just go, 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 go. And they told me, you better trust in your training and trust in God because they said you got about 15 seconds when you walk in a room full of hurting people. You got 15 seconds to figure out what's going on and who to talk to first and what to have, how to have to make it happen. And so all the way there, I say, God, if you ain't going with me, I don't want to be here. God, if you hear it, God, you hear it. Same way when I was in Vincent Johnson Hospital, God, you hear it. And the same way now, if I come and you tell me something's going on and you need me there, I'm praying all the way. God, help me get out of the way and you work through me. Work through me. Work through me. Go to Pitt Center. God, work through me. God, work through me. God, work through me. God, work through me. God I don't want to go without your presence. And everybody was leaving Jesus because he said, you're going to have to eat the bread and, and, and drink of my blood and all this. And his disciples were still there and says, where are you going to go? And we all leave him to him and says, leave. He says, where are we going to go? You got the words we need. All this stuff going on right now. Where are you going to go? Where's your phone? We're going to talk more about focus after homecoming. Probably two or three more times. But this is just the beginning. This week, seek His presence. You seek His presence through prayer, through worship. He can come to you on your job. He can come to you while you're sick. He can come to you while you're going through the worst of times. You can feel that gentle brush. And sometimes it's not a gentle brush. Sometimes I felt it just pure. I put a boot right in my rear end.
that thirst. I was excited to be here today. Because all day, all week, especially all day yesterday, I kept feeling that challenge.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Divine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever. Father God, we just pray this with them. We just love you, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that we can pay some special attention to you every day of our lives, Lord. Even the small things that you do, Lord, sometimes we overlook. And we need to fix your name up in praise, Lord. And Lord, help us to keep us our focus on you and what you do every single day, every minute of our day. We give you honor and glory and praise for all. In Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.